One fateful day, a man that goes by Thomas Stevenson found a lovely woman who was named Margaret Isabel Balfour. In 1848, the two lovebirds got married. A beautiful baby boy was introduced into the Stevenson household. That baby boy was probably named Robert Louis Stevenson. He was born in Interburg, Scotland on November 13, 1850. Robert was the only child born into the Stevenson family. He wasn't lonely since he had a lot of cousins to keep him company. Robert had health problems in 1859. What caused this was probably tuberculosis or a genetic malfunction. It is unknown, but whatever caused his illness carried with him throughout his life, since at the time there wasn't any medication to help Robert with his sickness. Thomas Stevenson wanted his child to go with the family business, which was being an engineer. But Robert didn't want to partake in any of that business. At the age of 17, in the year of 1867, Robert enrolled into Interberg University to study engineering, but only to please his father. But that didn't work out. Instead of taking his engineering studies seriously, he focused on writing imitating the writing styles of Michel de Montaigne, William Hazlitt, and Daniel Defoe. Deep down inside, Robert didn't like the major he was studying for, so he changed and went into law school in 1871. That too, he didn't find passion in law, but he found passion in writing. In 1875, Robert passes the bar for law but he decides not to practice it any longer. Instead, he finally followed his writing path and traveled to Europe. In Europe, especially in France, a boat ride down the river Oise inspired Lewis to write one of his popular books, An Inland Voyage. In 1876, Robert met the love of his life, a woman by the name of Fanny Osborne, a married American. But sadly, she went back to the States two years later, leaving Robert depressed. The following year, 1879, Robert traveled to America to find his love once more. But that left him with a life-threatening chest infection that almost snatched his life away. Fanny finally divorced her husband and married Stevenson the next year. She nurses him back to health so that they can have a long life together. Stevenson also met his stepchildren, one of which actually inspired Robert to create another story. That story soon was published in 1883. Stevenson set sails throughout the Eastern Pacific, but due to long hemorrhage, he settled in Samoa in 1890. Stevenson was later accused of sedition when he supported a Samoan chief that nearly banished him for a Samoa. During his stay in Samoa, there was actually a civil war going on between them. Germany, the US, and England was even involved. That's why Stevenson almost got banned, because the rebellion was too much in those times. Fighting in the streets, burning building downs, etc., etc., The last thing they need was another foreigner to be a part of the chaos. He truly wished to go back to his home country, but due to his sickness, it prevented him to go back. 1879, the same year Robert set out for America, he met one of his stepchildren that actually inspired him to create another story. That story was soon published in 1883. That story was named Treasured Island. The story was about a young boy by the name of Jim Hawkins who lived with his family in the family in the own, located in Bristol, England. This story takes place in the 18th century. A man by the name of Billy Bones died after he'd been presented with a black spot. Hastily, Jim and his mother opened Billy's chest what Jim saw he thought was valuable. So he set out to find the treasure using the map he found in the chest that once belonged to Billy. 1886, another one of his world-changing books was published. This one took the name of The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. 
This book is in the third person point of view of for Mr. Utterson, a lawyer who tr- tries to solve the murders Mr. Hyde committed. The book made it seem like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde were two separate people, but they weren't. They were the same. John Utterson soon later find out the truth about Jekyll and Hyde in an unsettling fashion. Even though this book was made in the 1880s, this book made its way into today's entertainment. People even took his work and recreated it into plays, songs, games, and even movies. People today don't even need to read the story of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde to understand who they are. The year of 1894. Stevenson finally found peace due to brain hemorrhage on December 3rd. He was buried on Mount Vang in Soma. Rest in peace, Robert Louis Stevenson. We will always remember you. Thank you for your breathtaking books you left for us.